dual role of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP can produce cardiac contraction at the same time it can produce smooth muscle relaxation. So how this cyclic AMP can produce quite opposite effects, contraction in the heart and relaxation in the smooth muscle. So let us see in this video. What is the role of cyclic AMP in our physiological system? So cyclic AMP is released by the action of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters act on the receptors. So suppose a neurotransmitter binds to the receptor site then it can activate the conversion of adenylyl cyclase to the cyclic AMP. Now this released cyclic AMP acts as a secondary messenger. So here adenylyl cyclase can act as a primary signaling mechanism which is then converted into cyclic AMP which acts as a secondary messenger. So this cyclic AMP is responsible for the cellular functions uh, within the target organ. So a chemical signal can lead to a cellular actions through the cyclic AMP. But this cyclic AMP can produce quite opposite effects in few of the organs like the heart and smooth muscle. So let us see how it can produce the quite opposite effects. First of all, let us see which type of receptors are linked with the decreased levels of cyclic AMP. Particularly cholinergic receptors like the M2 receptors present on the heart, they are going to produce the cardiac inhibition and M4 receptors which are present on the CNS are again responsible for the central inhibition. So both M2 as well as M4 receptors are coupled with the reduced levels of the cyclic AMP. And you can observe here that both of these receptors produce the same effect within the heart and CNS. So in the cardiac cells there is an inhibition and even the CNS, again, there is an inhibition. So here we can conclude that the role of cyclic AMP is excitatory in nature. And when these receptors are coupled with the decrease in the cyclic AMP, it can lead to the inhibition in the heart as well as the CNS. So here cyclic AMP acts in a similar way where it is going to produce the excitatory effect. And when its levels are decreased by M2 or M4 receptors, then it produces the inhibition. Now let us see which type of receptors are linked with the increase in the cyclic AMP. Particularly, adrenergic receptors like beta-1 receptors, beta-2 receptors and beta-3 receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic AMP. Beta-1 receptors are present on the heart where they produce cardiac contraction. And beta-2 receptors are present on the smooth muscle, which is responsible for the relaxation of the smooth muscle. And beta-3 receptors are present on the adipose tissue, which are responsible for the lipolysis, the breakdown of the fat. Here we can observe that the cyclic AMP produces quite opposite roles. It produces a contraction in the heart, whereas it produces a relaxation in the smooth muscle. In this way, cyclic AMP plays a dual role within the heart and smooth muscle, which are coupled with the adrenergic receptors. So now let us see what is the reason for this uh, dual role of the cyclic AMP. Is there any difference in the beta receptors? Because cyclic AMP is released through the beta receptors, let us see is there any difference in the beta receptors which are responsible for the quite opposite roles in the heart as well as the smooth muscle. Suppose this is a target organ. Now this target organ is activated by adrenaline. Now adrenaline is going to act on the adrenergic receptors. Then it activates the adenylyl cyclase system which is then going to become known to activated adenylyl cyclase. Now this activated adenylyl cyclase then converts the ATP into the cyclic AMP. In this way, the cyclic AMP can act as a secondary messenger. And the receptors present on this target organ may be either beta 1 or beta 2 receptors. And the target organ may be either cardiac or smooth muscle. So you can find that there is no difference in the formation of cyclic AMP when it is activated through beta 1 or beta 2 receptors. So the dual role of cyclic AMP cannot be attributed to the difference in its release as it is released in a similar way by both beta 1 as well as beta 2 receptors. 
So the dual role of cyclic AMP may be due to the cellular activities of the cyclic AMP, which produce a contraction in the heart and relaxation in the smooth muscle. Now let us see what is the role of cyclic AMP in the cardiac contraction. Let us consider this is a cardiac muscle. So now this cardiac muscle is having the two important filaments, actin and myosin. Under the resting phase, these actin and myosin are going to be physiologically blocked by troponin. Now troponin forms a physiological block between the actin and myosin, thereby it prevents the sliding of these two filaments on each other, preventing the contraction. Cardiac cells are equipped with the beta-1 receptors, and when the beta-1 receptors are activated, they release the cyclic AMP. Now this increased cyclic AMP within the cardiac muscle can lead to the activation of the protein kinase A. This activated protein kinase A then increases the calcium permeability, thereby the intracellular calcium levels in the cardiac muscle are going to be increased. Now the raised calcium levels can form a complex with the troponin so that the troponin can be removed from the actin and myosin. Now when this troponin block is removed, actin and myosin can slide on each other, then they lead to the cardiac contraction. In this way, cardiac muscle produces a contraction by removal of this troponin block with the help of the calcium. So that's why calcium is important for the cardiac contraction. Here the role of cycle KMP is to increase the intracellular calcium levels by activating the protein kinase A. In this way, beta-1 receptors, when they are activated, they increase the cyclic KMP, leading to contraction in the heart. Now, let us see the role of cyclic KMP in the smooth muscle, where it produces a quite opposite action. It produces a relaxation instead of the contraction. Let us consider this is the smooth muscle. Now, within the smooth muscle, again, important enzyme is the MLCK, myosin light chain kinases. These are the phosphorylating enzymes which are under resting conditions, they are in the inactive state. Now this MLCK can be converted into active state by the action of the calcium calmodulin complex. So when the calcium levels are going to be increased, it forms a complex with the calmodulin, so which can stimulate the MLCK to its active form. Once the MLCK, myosin light chain kinases are activated because of their phosphorylating capacity, they can phosphorylate the myosin light chains to the myosin light chain phosphates. Now these myosin light chain phosphates which are in an active form, then they can form a complex with the actin. They can form an actin myosin light chain phosphate complex which can lead to the contraction of the smooth muscle. In this way, again, calcium is important for the contraction of the smooth muscle, which activates the MLCK into the active form, leading to the actin myosin light chain phosphate uh, complex and smooth muscle contraction. And what is the role of cyclic KMP in this smooth muscle? Now, the smooth muscle is equipped with the beta 2 receptors. So, when the neurotransmitters like the adrenaline can act on the beta 2 receptors, then they also increase the cyclic KMP. But here the role of cyclic KMP is not to increase the calcium, but it acts in a different way. The raised levels of cyclic KMP then converts the MLCK into MLCK phosphate, which is the further inactive form of the MLCK. Now in this way, cyclic KMP will inhibit the activation of the MLCK and it makes uh, MLCK further inactive. So this results in the relaxation of the smooth muscle. Raised levels of cyclic KMP within the smooth muscle produce the relaxation instead of the contraction. Here the difference in the role of cyclic KMP is due to the difference in the contractile mechanism in the smooth muscle compared with the cardiac muscle. In the cardiac muscle, contraction is mediated by calcium troponin complex, but here the contraction is initiated by calcium calmodulin complex, which activates the MLCK into MLCK active form. And in the cardiac muscle, cyclic AMP increases the calcium, but in the smooth muscle, cyclic AMP will convert the MLCK into inactive form, which results in the relaxation of the smooth muscle. So why it is like this? For example, we have seen that cyclic AMP is increased with the adrenergic system. Adrenergic system is generally stimulated under stressful conditions. 
So under stressful conditions, our physiological system requires more blood supply as well as more oxygen supply. Both of these functions are mediated by adrenergic system through the beta receptors. Now adrenergic system can act on the beta 1 receptors as well as it can act on the beta 2 receptors. Both of these receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic AMP. When the beta 1 receptors are activated, they produce cardiac contraction. This results in the increased blood supply to the systemic organs. And when this is, adrenergic system acts through the beta 2 receptor, it produces the smooth muscle relaxation. So one of the smooth muscles is the bronchial relaxation, which increases the oxygen supply to the physiological organs. In this way, adrenergic system can increase the blood supply as well as the oxygen supply through the cyclic KMP. Quite opposite role of cyclic KMP is essential to sustain our physiological system under stressful conditions by the adrenergic system.